There are three children I want to introduce you to. First of all, I want to introduce you to my daughter. I really want to provide her the type of education that I would have liked. I really want to provide her the type of education that would foster her creativity. I want to empower her to take control of her education. I want her to be able to, to look at what she's interested in and fi find out everything that she needs to know. And so at the age of four, I gave her a tablet. I loaded it up with a bunch of apps, educational games, books, things like that. Everything to do with what she was interested in. And this really grabbed her attention. And so I started to work on this process and started to find things that not only suited her interests, but also suited her uh, education. I wanted to find things that she was really interested in, really interested in knowing, but would also educate her. One of the things we found was a game called Kerbal Space Program. Now, who has played Kerbal Space Program? Anyone? Great. Well, Kerbal Space Program is a really cool game. You, it's pretty complex. Uh, what you have to do is you have to build rockets and, and space planes. And you have to build it from scratch in this game environment. So you start off with a rocket engine. You have to bolt on a, a fuel tank. And you have to pipe it up with a fuel line. And you have to put fins and RCS thrusters to balance it out and some heat shielding, making sure that it doesn't burn up in the atmosphere. But it's really cool. It's really detailed. And my daughter loved it. And this was what I wanted to do. I wanted to expose her to the things that she's really passionate about. And so at the age of four, she started learning rocket science. And why not? Why can't a four-year-old learn rocket science? Now, it turns out her rockets were completely messed up. But some of her rockets flew better than mine. And I just wasn't really happy with that. But what, I, what really fascinated me was just how much self-directed effort she would spend on these, on these materials. She would come back to them time and time again, learning and learning. She would spend four or five hours at a time, sometimes. And she's not unique. We all have got children that's really curious. And so I want to introduce you to someone else. Her name's Fata. She's a really happy girl, as you can see. She lives in West Point, Liberia. Um, Liberia is pro probably one of the most challenging. West Point is probably one, one of the most challenging places for little girls to grow up. Liberia also has had devastating time. Over the last few years, most of their schools have been destroyed because of the Civil War. And over the last two years, the remaining schools have been converted into Ebola treatment centers. But that means girls like her and girls like, uh, children like her all around Liberia are not getting educated. There's just no schooling for them. And it's not limited to Liberia either. UNESCO estimates that there's 50 million kids all around the world, including here in the United States, that don't have access to school. Now, Fata, much like my daughter, is really passionate about learning. She loves learning. She's very curious, but she doesn't have the resources that my daughter has. However, she takes the initiative. She wants to become a pediatrician. So she goes around her community, and she looks after little kids. And she goes to the adults, and she learns all she can about how to take care of kids. Luckily, she's being supported by another organization called More Than Me, a really, really amazing organization that looks after kids in Liberia. But even with that support, even with her passion, it's going to be a struggle for her to reach that passion. It's going to be a struggle for her to find all the information that she needs to become what she wants. There's another girl I want to introduce you to. She lives in Kenya. She, just like my daughter and just like Fata, also is very passionate about learning. She loves learning. She's very curious. Now, Kenya offers free education, free primary education. So you would expect her opportunities to be much better than Fata, for example. But they just aren't. Her schools are being run by poorly trained teachers that are absent most of the time, resulting in her classrooms being filled with 90 other kids, not learning very much at all. And she's not the only one either. There's 650 million kids in this scenario not getting a basic education. There's 250 million kids that are illiterate and innumerate. These kids do have access to schools. They do have access to free schooling in some instance. But because these schools are poorly run, because there aren't trained teachers, the access means nothing. Access does not equal education. This is a huge challenge. 
We just can't build enough schools and we can't train enough teachers to reach these kids. Even at our current pace and with all the good work that so many folks are doing, we're only going to reach these kids by 2086. That means three generations of girls and boys will be lost. If we're going to reach these kids, we are going to need to think radically different. If we are going to reach these kids while they are still young, we're going to need to think radically, dif radically different. What if we could leverage these children's drive to learn? What if we can empower them to teach themselves and empower them to teach their friends? What if we can build a software platform to do this that is highly scalable and can work in, in contexts where there are schools and where there are formal learning settings, but also work in contexts where there are no schools and where there are no teachers? What if we could build this platform to run on low-cost tablets, charged by solar power, run online and offline, and work in the most extreme environments? One example is the Global Literacy Project, who in 2012 dropped off a number of tablets in a remote village in Ethiopia, where 100% of the kids were illiterate, including technologically illiterate. They just dropped off these tablets without any instruction, without any guidance. And yet, within moments, the first child figured out how to switch them on and then ran around the, the village screaming and shouting, teaching all the other kids how to do the same. Within a few weeks, they were navigating the app seamlessly, just like our kids would. And within a few months, they were reading words, writing letters, singing the ABCs. What this example shows us and what many examples are showing us is how autonomous learning could work. And so we are using that as a basis of our thinking. We're using that best practice as a basis of our thinking to develop our platform. And we're using some pretty sophisticated technology like voice recognition, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. We're leveraging what we know about the exponential growth on technology. We know that the computing power of these low-cost devices will increase exponentially, as well as their storage capacity. We also know that these, the prices of these devices are halving at the same rate. We expect these devices to be well below $10 in the next 10 years, next five years, which makes it really viable for us to reach every child. And that is why we built the Moonshot Education Project. We're a community project, an open community project, who thinks we can solve this while these children are still young. And we're approaching this through a radically open approach so that we can attract the best minds from various fields, from various backgrounds to work on this problem together just like many open source projects we believe in. At the moment, our group is from 10 countries, seven different languages, and we're, we're leveraging this diversity and this perspective to, to figure things out from a global perspective. We're focusing on building an open platform as opposed to a singular app. An open platform allows us to, to gather data on everything that, that the child is doing, not only their interaction with a particular app or how they read a book or how they perform in an exercise, we're picking up data from all elements of their, of their interaction. And this helps us get, get, get a more holistic perspective of what the child is doing, and it helps us to more accurately figure out what works and what does not work. In addition, our platform is being built from the ground up to be highly scalable. We're making sure that it's language agnostic, that it's content agnostic. We're making sure that the, the interface design will allow us to make it culturally relevant to all the kids that we're deploying this to. On the content side, we're going to be building a flexible content framework that can accommodate tried and tested quality learning material from existing publishers, as well as crowdsourced material that we'll be producing ourselves. The goal here is that we continually evaluate these, these pieces of content, be they books or education games, whatever they are figure out what works and what does not work. Initially, our focus is to solely uh, focus on early literacy and numeracy. The standards and metrics associated with these are pretty well known, and so we're using those as our metrics for success. And so within the guidelines of early literacy and numeracy, we're developing an autonomous learning solution. And once we know how to deliver that, once we know how to deliver literacy and numeracy autonomously, we can branch into almost any learning. And that's when it thing, things get really exciting because I just can't keep up with my own daughter's curiosity. So I need one of these things myself. Key to strong design is to empower 
peer-to-peer -peer interactivity. So in contexts where there are no teachers, the focus is going to be about organizing kids into groups for group activities and matching kids that can learn from one another. In contexts where there are teachers, in contexts where these kids do have schools, we're going to focus the, the platform to provide these, these teachers with, an, with a view of where the child is, where they're going, what they're strong at, what they, what they need to learn. The goal of what we're doing is building a platform that can gather evidence on what works and what doesn't for an autonomous learning platform. All the while building, building a platform that is ultimately scalable and can reach the whole world. We're developing a platform that can work in all instances, in the most extreme scenarios like refugee camps, disaster zones, places where open education is, not, is, is forbidden. We believe all children from my daughter in New York to Fatter in Liberia, can be empowered to learn through autonomous learning. We believe that these kids should not be forgotten. We believe we can reach these kids while they are still young, and we don't need to waste three more generations of girls and boys. And this is our idea worth spreading. Thank you.